Hi everyone, welcome back to Elfo Deco. Today we are making another ocean piece and we're not working with a mold today, we are working with a wood surface. And let me show you the piece that we are making. And it's so cool with the iridescent effect. So I'll show you exactly how I added this effect to the board and how I did the waves and how this whole piece came together. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is prep our surface. This is a 12 by 12 inch piece of wood that I have on hand. I have a lot of these because I bought an entire 4 by 8 from Home Depot to have this cut to size for another project. So I figured why not resin them. We're using a spur adhesive from Craft Bond to attach the iridescent film to the wood. And this film is the one that we're using. It shifts from blue to pink and some yellow at different angles and lighting. I just want to make a note that you should protect your work area from the spray. So I lined my table with a trash bag that I cut open in half for some extra coverage. Going back to the film, we don't need this entire sheet so I'm just going to cut it to the size that I need. I believe this film is supposed to be a window film. Like it's supposed to be applied with water, soapy water onto the window and then the sun will shine through it and create some really pretty iridescent effects on your wall. But since we're applying this to wood, we are using an adhesive. This is the same film we used to make our iridescent trays in a previous video. There is a clear backing to this film and it is a bit annoying to peel off. I think we could probably just apply without peeling it, but I prefer to have just a film in case it does the clear backing does affect anything. We finally got the clear backing separated and this is what just the film looks like. It doesn't look much different but the back was just clear so there shouldn't really be any difference. To apply the spray, give the can a shake about a minute. I did most of the shaking off camera because the shaking can be uncomfortable for some people, especially if I have to speed it up. And when you're ready, just spray an even coat and apply the film onto the wood with the squeegee. I'm not the best with these kinds of sprays, so I might be doing this wrong, but it gets the job done. I just want to make a note regarding the adhesive spray that it is more of a temporary bond unless you apply it within several seconds, and I'm way too slow for that. But the temporary bond is fine because the film will be sealed in with the resin. Let's take a look at the cool iridescent effect by itself. This is going to be the background for our piece. Now we have to trim off the excess film on the side. I just use a pair of regular scissors. Before pouring, we have to protect the back of the board with tape. Here I have blue painter's tape. I think the green frog tape is another popular one that people use. This is because resin will drip over the edge of the board and onto the back of the piece. You know how we use glue to protect the back of our resin pieces when we're top coating? That's the same reason we are using tape here. Since wood is porous though, I am not exactly sure how the glue would work here, so that's why I am not using the glue. When we're done taping all four sides, we're going to let the adhesive and film set overnight. This is just in case so the film doesn't peel away from the board as we're pouring our resin. It's time to pour our first layer. I am setting some cups down so I can set the wood board at a height away from the table. That way the board won't be sitting in a pool of resin that dripped over the edges. I started off with two cups in the middle, but then decided to place a cup at all four corners for more stability. You want to make sure your surface is stable and leveled. Today we are going to measure and pour our resin. I am using this measuring cup from Pixis Creative. It has the measurements already on it. I'm not sure if you can see it clearly because of the iridescent background. 
and my attempts to show them clearer is definitely not helping. Anyways, it has measurements on it already, so it will make the measuring process much easier. For the resin, we're going to try something new, the designer art resin from Super Clear Epoxy. They actually sent this for me to try and they told me that it would be perfect for things like my ocean art, so we're going to put that to the test. This is a 1 to 1 volume resin. We're going to measure out 8 fluid ounces of resin for this, so 4 ounces of part A and 4 ounces of part B. Now that we have our part A and part B measured out, we'll mix it with a plastic mixing stick. Wood popsicle sticks are usually the go-to for mixing, but they introduce a lot more micro bubbles into the mixture because of how porous they are. I am also speeding up the mixing like six times because the mixing process is usually three to five minutes. We're supposed to mix resin slowly for minimal bubbles. If you mix at the speed of this video, you will have a super bubbly mixture and that's the last thing you want. You'll know the mixing is done when the mixture goes from foggy to clear and there are no streaks left. You'll see bubbles because the act of mixing introduces bubbles and this does feel like a thicker resin, but you'll be able to see the bubbles clearly. Since we're spreading the resin onto the wood, the layer won't be really thick and the bubbles should be able to float to the top easily and we can pop it with a heat gun. The resin is fully mixed now and if you jump back to when we first started mixing, you'll see the foggy to clear that I mentioned. Now we're going to split the resin into separate cups for the different colors that we're using. These cups are clean, but I'm reusing them so you see other colors in the cups. They're just previously cured resin and it won't affect the resin that we're using now. For the colors that we're using today, they are two blues, tropical blue and pacific blue from Mayspring, and the white pigment from Casting Craft. The white is what we will use for our waves. We're just going to add a little bit of blue to our resin because we don't want an opaque color. We want to be able to see the iridescent film in the background. Again, the mixing in the video is sped up by a lot and the real time is much slower, so do not mix at the speed of this video. For the white pigment, more experienced ocean artists will probably have specific number of drops that they use. I'm not sure what the best formula is, but I put about like probably 10 drops here. Things happen, like resin spilling out of the cup as we're mixing sometimes, but we can just clean that off. I wiped it with a paper towel and then we're going to add a drop of 91 isopropyl alcohol to clean it off. I was going to do this anyway to clean off any fingerprints that may have left in the film application process. Once that's done, we'll pour our ocean. As I was pouring, I realized I needed some more blue resin to cover the iridescent film on the board. I do have clear left, so we will just tint those with the two blues again. It is really hard to mix the same color twice, especially when we are making this as a one-off project and not keeping track of all the resin to pigment ratio to the T. We'll just have to be mindful that our second colors may be lighter or darker, so blend it into the resin that's already on the board. On to the waves. For 
for the white waves, something I like to do is several lines of white as opposed to just one thick line at the bottom. The more random the lines, the more natural it looks. I think this gives the waves some extra depth even though it's done on the same layer. Or maybe I'm just seeing things and it doesn't make a difference. You let me know. Another tip here is to angle your heat gun to push the waves out from the bottom. I think I'm done with pushing my waves now and it's time to let the cells form. Watch the cells as I do this next step because they will be more obvious over time. I am going around the sides to try and even out the drips and cover the entire edge of the board with resin. Usually the resin doesn't drip around the entire edge for me, only some parts and that would create bumps on the edge where the resin drips occurred. That's probably because I don't pour a lot of resin for it to drip over the entire board. Going around the entire edge with resin will help even out the sides. When we're done with this layer, we'll just let it set and be back to pour the second layer of waves. We're back only 4 hours later to pour the second layer. The speedy set time surprised me. Our ocean has shifted a little bit, mostly towards the bottom of the board. I want to say the reason for this is because resin is liquid and it's trying to level itself on the board. Correct me if I'm wrong. I had some leftover resin as well so I poured it into a mold that I had on the side. This layer, I already mixed up my resin and split them into the colors that we need. We're using the same resin, super clear epoxy, and the same pigments from May Spring and white from Casting Craft. For this layer, I wanted to add some sand as well because I didn't really like how far down my waves went. This is real sand from a beach in Rio. This was actually the souvenir that I wanted from when my parents went to Rio back when I just started resin in mid-2019. I knew I wanted to experiment with ocean art and real sand would be perfect for it. Now almost 4 years later, I can finally use them. Maybe we can name this piece after the beach the sand is from if I can find that out. Once the sand is mixed in, pour the second layer of waves just like how we did with the first.
Again, once I am done with the waves, I am going around the edge with my popsicle stick and maybe resin if I need it to get even edges. The resin traveled further down from where I want it to be, so I am just adding some white clear, I mean, on the bottom here to help try to push it up a little bit. Right here I am pouring some of the resin that I have left, mostly the lighter blue because I feel like the top of the piece is kind of dark. So I'm trying to blend the lighter blue into the darker blue that I had originally had up here. It's 12 hours later and it seems like our piece is fully hardened. The iridescent effect is so cool and adding the sand was a great idea in my opinion. The final step we need to do is remove the blue tape on the back. Let's make some space on our tabletop to do this on a flat surface. We'll put the cups away and put the scraps in our scrap box. The piece of resin scrap should just peel off from our work area because it's lined with a silicone mat. I love these mats because resin doesn't stick to it. And look at how pretty these scraps are too. Ocean Drips can make some very gorgeous pieces. Not that I really know what to do with them, but it would be a shame to hide these in our cardstock trays. While we're at it, let me show you the piece that I made with the extra resin. I just poured all the extra resin that was still in the cup into a mold that I had on the side. Maybe I'll finish this up when Christmas time comes along. Now that our table is clean, we'll flip the piece around to peel off the tape and the resin drips. I added a piece of parchment paper underneath to help protect the ocean design from scratching. Just start peeling the tape and the drips should come with it. They may be a little stubborn sometimes and if that happens, use a heat gun to loosen up the resin to make it easier to peel off. I just want to mention the dark spots along the sides that you see when I peel the tape off. That's there because resin seeped into the wood since our tape is not like completely bonded to the wood. It could probably be sanded for a clean finish. While we're focusing on the back of this piece, I also want to give you some ideas for adding hanging hardware for this wood board. You can use sawtooth hangers and attach them to the back. They can be screwed in since this is wood. Just make sure the length of your screws won't go through to the front of your piece. You can also drill a keyhole slot if you have the tools to do so or use several command strips for photo frames. Several different options. Okay, now we're removing the last strip we have on the board and then we're done. The back is flat. It has no drips that would make the piece wobbly when we're hanging it up. And that is very important. Let's flip it over to check out our ocean again. The iridescent color shifting is so, so amazing. I can't get over it. Let me show you this piece outside of our resin room. I am so glad I added the sand in there. It really completes the beach look. And look at how pretty those cells are. There's so much depth in it. Let's see that iridescent in action. It's almost like the sunlight from my window is adding a sun to this piece. So, so beautiful. 
I'm making another one of these for sure. Let me know your thoughts on this ocean piece in the comments. Thank you for watching this video. I had so much fun making this ocean piece and working with a new wood surface. I hope you enjoyed this video as well. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to check out my website to see all my artwork as well. They're all available on my site, anything that I make on this channel. And if you have any questions or feedback, leave it in the comments below. I'll see you next time.